Hello children, this is our read aloud for today. Christopher's Harvest Time by Elsa Besco. This is one of my favorites of her books and probably the oldest that I have. Christopher had no brothers or sisters. He usually played on his own. One autumn day, he was given a new ball and he ran into the garden to play with it. I'm going to throw my ball right up into the sky, he cried. But the ball flew up into the maple tree instead. And Christopher looked up and there was a strange boy sitting on a branch with a ball in his hand. Throw it down, please, will you, said Christopher. You come up and fetch it, said the boy. I can't, said Christopher. Try, said the boy, you'll manage. And Christopher did. Soon he was sitting astride the branch facing the boy. And the boy started to play a tune on a reed pipe. You do play well, said Christopher. Do you think so, said the boy smiling. Where do you come from, asked Christopher. From north to south, I make my merry way. The whole wide world is mine for work and play, sang the boy. Don't your mother and father live here, said Christopher. My father is cold and stern, his kin the northern winds. My mother is meadow sweet, rosy cheeked and swift of feet, sang the boy. I'm the son of my father, the boy went on, and I cling to my mother to keep with the sun. I don't understand a word you're saying, said Christopher. Guess what my name is, said the boy. I can't, said Christopher. My name is September, said the boy. Please, September, said Christopher. Can I have my ball back? Find it if you can, cried September, and he threw the ball right over Christopher's head and into the gooseberry bushes. Then he leaped down laughing from the tree and Christopher slid down after him. A whole lot of little gooseberry boys came rushing out of the bushes and started chasing after the ball. They were soon all in a heap fighting over it, but the gooseberry girls had stayed by their bushes. Hello, September, said one of them. You've still got some gooseberries for you. Can Christopher have some too? said September. Oh, he's always here, said the gooseberry girls. He eats so many he gets stomach ache. At that moment, the gooseberry boys came over and Christopher saw that the biggest of them all had his ball. I didn't know all you boys lived in my garden. He said, please, can I have my ball back? No, not yet. You took far too many gooseberries from my bush this summer. Now I'm going to have some fun with you. Hello, over there, here's a ball for you. So saying, the gooseberry boy threw the ball over into the red currant bushes. And as the ball landed in the red currant bushes, a red currant girl peeped out. Don't throw your ball around like that, she said. You'll spoil all my ripe berries. Please, can I have my ball back? pleaded Christopher. It's over there, I think, said the red currant girl. But Christopher, will you tell your mother the red currants will soon be too ripe? She must come and pick them soon because they won't make good jelly if they're overripe. Mother said we're going to pick them tomorrow, said Christopher. That's good, said the girl. Hurry now and go and look for your ball. I think it's gone over there by the black currants. September ran over to the black currant bushes. Hey, old man, here I am. Aren't you pleased to see me? He cried. Old man Black Grant stuck his head out of the bush. Glad to see you, he said. There's hardly a ripe berry on my bushes yet. Well, hurry up and ripen them as quickly as you can. Father says he's coming very soon, said September. All this hustle and bustle, grumbled the old man. The summers get shorter and shorter every year. And where the sun gets to, I just can't figure out. Please, sir, have you seen my ball? said Christopher. 
Was that your ball, boy? said the old man. Goodness gracious, I thought it was going to be the end of me. I really did. I threw it over there at the scarecrow. And with that, the old man crept back into his bush. Heavens, the way that ball flies about, said September. We'd better go and see the scarecrows guarding the peas. You ask him, Christopher, said September. Good day, Mr. Scarecrow, said Christopher, bowing politely. Have you seen my ball? Shoo, shoo, said the Scarecrow. I'd like to say that to whoever threw it. It nearly had my hat off. They'd better look out. If I catch them... How are you these days, said Christopher. All rubbish and trash, hardly any sun and lots of mud, said the Scarecrow and I've got rheumatism all over me, so tell your father I soon want to go inside for the winter. Come on, all you peas and beans, cried September. Let's try to cheer the old man up. Sing him that song I taught you. Before Christopher could blink, he found himself being pulled into a ring, and they were all dancing round the scarecrow, singing at the tops of their voices. Let us dance and let us sing, Round and round in a merry ring. Mr. Scarecrow, big and strong, it's for him we sing our song. Who's afraid of Mr. Scarecrow? Who's afraid of him? Thieves are afraid, they run. Dogs are afraid, they snarl. Cats are afraid, they hiss. Horses are afraid, they Cows are afraid they ooh, but the birds aren't scared of anyone. Oh, no, no, no. Let us dance and let us sing round and round in a merry ring. Shoo! Off you go, said the scarecrow. You shouldn't tease an old man like that, but he couldn't help laughing. The ball seemed to have gone off in the direction of the apple tree. And September ran up, and there he found Mrs. Branley. Hello, September. Are you here already? She said. Goodness, I'll need to have all my apples ready now, won't I? Have you seen Christopher's ball? said September. Was that what flew up into the top of my tree and hit one of my apples? said Mrs. Branley. Come in, and I'll show you the way. Mrs. Branley showed the boys the way up to her leafy bower was very beautiful up there and Mrs. Bramley gave them both a lovely fresh apple. Please sing us a song, said September. Oh, I suppose I could, said Mrs. Bramley, but you'll have to accompany me too because my voice isn't very strong. So Mrs. Bramley sang as she plucked slowly on her lute while September played on his reed pipe. When the snow lies soft and thick On every field and wood and nest Settling on the leafless branches And I'll know it's time to rest In spring and sun My buds break open Branches stretch and grow and all is peaceful, beautiful, with blossom pink and white like snow. Now every twig is laden with apples green and apples red. This is the time of harvesting. Autumn's here. It's time for bed. Where are my children? Tucked up and sleeping. In store and larder, all ready for eating. When the snow lies soft and thick on every field and wood and nest, settling on the leafless branches, then I'll know it's time to rest. Thank you, thank you for that song a voice from the plum tree and there were the Mrs. Plums waving at them. Come over here and taste our plums, they cried. 
Mine are juicy, large and blue. Hers are ugly and yellow, one of them sang. Come over here. Don't believe her, Christopher, sang the other. Just look at mine, ripe and fine. You won't taste any sweeter. Thank you very much, said Christopher, but I've promised Mother I won't eat any plums yet. That's right, Christopher, said September. You keep your word. Have you seen Christopher's ball? He went on. It flew right past with a bang and a crash and landed in the strawberry bed down below, said Miss Blue Plum. I almost fainted with fright, said Miss Yellow Plum. I thought my last hour had come. Then we'd better go and look in the strawberry bed, said September. But the strawberries are all fast asleep at this time of year, said Mrs. Bramley. You can't wake them up. Then I'll sing very quietly, said September. A song mother taught me when I was small. Go carefully, Christopher, and see if you can find your ball among the strawberry plants. Father Strawberry, fine and red, had perched proudly on his head. Mother Strawberry, just as grand, fine silk dress and folded hands. Then come daughters, not yet quite ripe, See big sister, lips close tight, little brother at the tail, riding on his favorite snail. My wild strawberry and her flock looked with awe on this grand parade. Ma, oh ma, who can they be? Hush, hush, my dears, and curtsy low. There are rich cousins, don't you know? Thanks for the song, September, a voice cried from the pear tree, and Mr. Pear came out. Hello, he said to Christopher. No good looking here for your ball. It's nowhere around here. Good day, Mr. Pear, said September. What fine pears you have on your tree. Yes, indeed, said Mr. Pear. No shortage of pears here, but they're getting much too heavy. My branches are getting on a bit, too, and they may break. Christopher, will you tell your father they need some props? Yes, I certainly will, said Christopher, but where is my ball? It bounced on a root and hit my foot, said Mr. Pear, so I gave it a kick over into the next bed. Then it must be in the cabbage patch, said September, and off they went. Hello, Mrs. Cabbage. Do you know where the ball has gone, said September? Yes, indeed I do, said Mrs. Cabbage, but first you must guess this. Who is the grandest lady in the garden? Mrs. Sunflower, perhaps, or Mrs. Dahlia, said September. Huh? They're just frilly extras, said Mrs. Cabbage. Look at me. My top's just like a rose, and it stays on right past the summer. And I can be made into all sorts of things. No one's quite as useful as me. I think Mrs. Bramley is the grandest lady in the garden, said Christopher. No one else has such lovely flowers in the spring and such good fruit in the autumn. But she's no good for a proper meal, said Mrs. Cabbage. Well, as you clearly have no idea as to who's who in the garden, I haven't time to stand here talking all this nonsense with you. And Mrs. Cabbage flung the ball into the flower bed and turned back to her cabbage patch. Christopher ran over to the flower bed. And the flowers were all standing in a row with their hands behind their backs. Let it go from hand to hand, from one to another. Let it go, let it go. Never let it stop, they sang. Who's got my ball? asked Christopher. Guess which of us has got it, cried the flowers. Mrs. Astor, said Christopher. Uh, Mrs. Dahlia, said September. No, you're wrong, said Mrs. Dahlia, laughing. Now you must pay a forfeit. But you've already got the ball as a forfeit, said September. Then you must redeem it, 
said the Nasturtiums. What shall he do to redeem his forfeit? They all sang, holding up the ball. He must sing us a song, cried the marigolds. Yes, please, September, sing us a song, cried all the flowers. Well, all right, said September, but it'll have to be the last song of the day. You can borrow my lute, said Mrs. Bramley. Then Christopher saw that all the garden people had gathered round in September to listen. And September took the lute, he played a few notes, then began to sing. Fair flowers shining bright, a show to dazzle all. Frost will soon appear to nip your pretty heads, and soon your leaves will fall. For autumn's here, fine plums, yellow and blue. Apples bright, full grown, juicy pears all green and gray, currants glowing red and clear. Summer has flown and autumn's here. The sun is still high in the sky, giving warmth and glee. Fruit and flowers all colorful glow with good cheer. So come and dance with me. Autumn is here. Bravo, September, cried the nasturtiums as they threw back him the ball. That was a good game, Christopher, said September. We must play again one day. And he threw the ball to Christopher, smiling and waving goodbye. Christopher caught the ball with both hands. Don't go, September, he cried. But September had already disappeared. You can keep the ball as long as you stay cried Christopher, but no one answered. When Christopher looked round the garden, he saw that he was quite alone and everything looked just as it usually did. He almost started crying, but then he heard a voice coming from the apple tree. Don't be sad, Christopher, said the voice. We're all still here, although you can't see us. Christopher ran and flung his arms round the tree trunk. Promise me, he said, Promise me you'll always answer when I talk to you. Of course I will, Christopher, said Mrs. Bramley, dropping her very best apple, plop, onto his nose. The end.